Well, it's funny, on the second Sunday of Easter, we're naturally focusing on doubting Thomas. But what we really should be focusing in on is that wonderful exclamation of the disciples to their companion Thomas, we have seen in the Lord. Because in that first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, it's clear that the early Christians had an experience of the risen Lord, the living Christ, within the community of faith itself. And they understood that their faith, the living Christ, had to be embodied in their community of faith. That their community of faith really had to embody the values of Christ. Those values of unity in heart and mind, of compassion, of generosity, of caring for one another. And to the measure that they could embody those values, to that measure the living Christ would be present not only in their community of faith, but in the larger community as well. For many of us, we look at the community of faith, our local parish, and sometimes we don't think, it, uh, think of it as ideal or idyllic as the first community of disciples was depicted in Acts. But we have to understand that all of us, virtually all of us, received our faith in Jesus Christ from a parish. And it's to the parish that we turn to have that faith in the risen Christ strengthened through the sacraments and also through the support of the men and women of that community of faith. Because in a world that can sometimes be very hostile to gospel values, we need to be reminded that there are others who share our faith in the risen Christ and to receive their support and also to receive their encouragement and exhortation to live out the values of Christ so that we can continue to give that kind of dynamic witness to the living Christ that the early Christians did and did so successfully. And I think returning to that gospel theme, it's really remarkable to just sense the excitement, the joy, the enthusiasm when they tell Thomas, you know, we have seen the Lord. They're really excited and, and aroused by that. And I think sometimes we as Christians uh, lose touch with that sense of excitement about our encounter with the risen Lord because we're all very busy people, a lot of things are on our minds, and so sometimes we can be dulled to the reality of the risen Christ in our very midst. Just in my way of example, when, when you see a husband or a wife caring for a spouse through a long and difficult illness, then you've seen the Lord. And when you see a successful adult, for example, mentoring an inner city youth, and what it, what it means to be successful in life, not just in terms of monetary success, but how to live a good and proper life, you've seen the Lord. Or when you've seen persons standing with immigrants at a time when immigrants are easily scapegoated because of the dislocations socially and economically that are occurring in our society today, you've seen the Lord. And so we as contemporary Christians need to recapture that sense of enthusiasm that those first disciples had in seeing the risen Lord. And we can only do that by attuning our lives through prayer to the presence of the risen Christ in our midst and also seeking again to be that presence of the risen Christ in the world. And as for poor Thomas, I mean, I think we have to understand that those first disciples went through a tremendous trauma. They had put all their hopes, their dreams in Jesus Christ, and they saw him brutally and cruelly murdered. And so those hopes seemed to have been dashed. So it's understandable that understand why they might not want to see those hopes raised anew, only to have those hope dashed once more. So Thomas wanted to see the risen Christ for himself. He didn't want to just take the words of his fellow disciple. He wanted to see him for himself. And when Christ obliged Thomas with that, what's important to always remember is what Thomas said. He made one of the most profound and extraordinary statements of faith in the Gospels, my Lord and my God. And in that, Thomas was making it clear that he had no doubt who it was that he had seen, and he had no hesitancy to declare that. So I think on this second Sunday of Easter, we really should focus on those occasions when we have seen the risen Lord, and how do we as Christians give witness to the risen Christ in our daily lives? Do others hear in our speech and see in our actions a presence of the living Christ? Sometimes we have some rough stretches in our life and God seems distant from us, absent from us. And in those dark and difficult moments, we have to turn to the Lord and once again renew our confidence in the Lord. And we do that by consciously calling to mind the ways in which the Lord has been present in our lives, the ways in which the Lord has been present in our community of faith, such that even if the Lord still does not seem quite immediate and present to us as he was for Thomas, we can still declare our faith in God because of our memory of how God has been present to our collective community and how God has been present to us individually in our lives, such that we can trust in God's living presence in our lives. If you have faith, everything is all sewn up in a neat, tidy package. There's no doubts, no questions. You have faith, and that faith just carries you forward. Well, Thomas reminds us that that faith sometimes doesn't include an element of doubt, an element of questioning. And so we, and in those moments of doubt, in those moments of questioning, we do turn to God for 
illumination, for, for guidance, for wisdom. And when we're blessed with those moments of illumination and guidance, hopefully we can respond as generously as Thomas did to recognize that, yes, indeed, Lord, you are present and that you are with me. And although I might not understand all that's happening in my life at this given moment, I can trust in you because you are a living God and therefore you are with me and strengthening me in my journey of faith. And so I think for Tom, the thing for us, Thomas serves to remind us that faith does not mean that everything is neatly tied up for us in a, in a wonderful package, but that it has room for doubt, rooms for questions.